I'm here with Dr. Romano to do a problem on carbon-13. Hi, carbon-13 is going to be a way that we can examine a molecule and we can learn about how many different carbons are present and we can learn some information about the structure. I'm going to go over four examples. Two will be easy and two will be challenging. Any other questions on this, I want you to go to the Dat Destroyer and look very carefully at because you're going to have to be responsible for this for the DAT exam. If you can do this set of questions, you are ready to go, so come around. The first thing I want to do is we want to look at this first compound, and I want to know how many signals would you get in a carbon-13. Well, as you can see, if I label these as the carbon A, this is carbon B, and this is carbon C, and these two, of course, would be the same because they're coming from the same area of carbon, which is C, we get four signals. And I wouldn't like you to remember one big landmark is around 180 ppms. The 180 is the downfield signal. Most of the signals would be way upfield, 10, 20, 30 in that area, but a carbonyl comes in really downfield around 180. So I would expect four signals, and I would see that nice strong signal around 180. So we got one down with ease. Problem number two is propenal. I would get three signals, carbon A, carbon B, and carbon C. They're all different, there's no symmetry, and the carbonyl group would be right around where I would expect at 180, 190, 200, right in that area. Because there's an electronegative element that is directly attached to this carbon to the left of me, it would be a little more than 180, so I called it around 190. But the key thing is, as long as you got the 180 in your mind, you're in good shape. Anytime you see carbon with a double bond, an sp2 carbon, they come in around 135. So these are two must-have numbers for the DAT. I'm not going to kill you on the carbon-13 numbers, but I would definitely know around the 180 mark and the 135 for a double bond. So this would give three signals. Let's look at number three. I actually posted this in the study group. Um, and we had a total debacle on this question. Now, if I gave you this, clearly we see there's one signal. I don't think anyone could not see it because there's only one carbon. Alexandra, where do you think that that one signal will appear? Give me a number. Oh, Dr. Romano, don't insult my intelligence. I think 180. Let's go to the other board and let's have a look, and we'll talk about your intelligence at another time. The first thing I want you to do is I want you to look at formaldehyde. And I wrote down that formaldehyde, contrary to your organic teachers, always just thrown on the board. Oh, we treat it with formaldehyde. Truth be known, formaldehyde is super reactive and it's not readily available in the pure monomer form. What would happen is it would actually react with itself three, even four times and form trimers and tetramers. So what we have to do is we put it in solution. So when we put it in solution, it exists as an equilibrium with its hydrate. And normally the carbonyl group is faded. If I gave you an aldehyde and we put it in solution, you would always have the carbonyl group faded. But not in this case. In this case, the hydrate is faded. And I gave you an idea of the equilibrium constant. That would be 2.3 to the third. That would mean that 99%, percent 99.9% .9 of this molecule exists in the hydrate form. It's very important for the DAT. So you're going to remember. Always remember, we always shift the equilibrium towards the carbonyl compound. Unless... It's very, very tiny, like we see in formaldehyde. Then it shifted in the direction of the diol. All right, so what we did here, since we're favoring the hydrate, that number would not be 180. You would see it downfield, but it would be half of that value. So as you can see, that value came in around 83 ppms. 
That's a hard problem, and it's a trick problem, but it's better to do a trick problem and you gain some strength than I gave you some Mickey Mouse question and you thought you understood it and you didn't gain any strength by it. Some people call it overkill. Overkill, that's bullshit. Nothing wrong with learning the concepts and then getting nailed on a question and now you know and you gain some more strength. I want to share with you one final problem that I do in my dad's study group here in New York and I almost always get kids to get it wrong. It's rare that I even get a single student that gets it right. If I gave you this compound and I want you to tell me how many carbon-13 signals would there be? Alexandra, do you have any idea? No, I don't, Dr. Mato. Let's take a look. First thing we would do, now what I would do if I were you, why don't you stop the tape and try it yourself? I give you this hideous looking bicyclo compound and I want to know how many carbon-13 signals there is. Every year, I forget to put this in the Dad Destroyer. Next year, I'm gonna probably forget it again. So I might as well just do it now and show everybody. So here we go. First thing, I'm gonna label these two carbons the A's. And then these would be the B's. This would be the C. So, so far there's three. Now, this is a D. D is directly attached to A. But I can also say that this is a D because that's attached to A. This is a D, and this is a D, this is a D, and this is a D. They're all attached to A's. So because of the symmetry of the molecule, you would see this bad boy with four signals. If you can do this problem set in this videotape, it'll be a piece of cake for the dad. So remember, whenever you're doing a carbon-13, you gotta look at the number of different carbons, but you gotta be careful of symmetry. Just because you have five carbons, that doesn't mean anything. Five carbons, if you had a five carbon pentanal, you get five signals. But what would happen if you had five carbons and it was a three pentanoin, such as this? If it was a three pentanoin, as you can see, you would have symmetry, and therefore you would have only three signals. So you gotta be careful of symmetry. You understand this clip, you are good to go. All right, I hope this helps. You got any further questions, hit me up in study group. Good day to you.